Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for our Celebrations Ecological City Climate Art and Climate Solutions Zoom. Um, for those of you who are new, Earth Celebrations is a nonprofit organization based on the Lower East Side of New York City. Um, for the past 32 years, we've been applying the arts to build engagement, action, and amplify local solutions to urban and environmental challenges. So our current Ecological City project is a collaborative art and climate action initiative bringing together and celebrating local climate solution initiatives throughout the community gardens, neighborhood, and waterfront on the Lower East Side. Um, so March through May, we invite community participants to collaborate with our artists and residents through workshops, creating visual art, giant paper mache puppets, costumes, and performances that are presented in the culminating Ecological City procession um, for climate solutions throughout um, 21 sites um, on the Lower East Side. And each site embedded within it hosts a variety of um, inspiring urban green infrastructure uh, and climate solutions that get celebrated through the arts and through the pageant. Um, so this evening, you will hear from our artists, our local environmental experts, and partner organizations sharing some of their designs and projects for Ecological City, everything from puppet and costume and bio arts workshops, a participatory painting climate solutions, banner uh, making, and uh, the bioremediation sculpture. There are just a whole host of um, variety of opportunities for participants to get involved and collaborate. So, you know, after the meeting, you can just let us know what your talents and skills are, and we'll definitely figure out a way um, for you to join us. So um, thank you. And now I guess we will move to our first um, presenter, which is our artist, Lucrecia Nervoa, who's been working with us for a very long time, since the late 90s. And, um, she will be directing the puppet workshops. And um, here is Lucrecia. Hi, hi everybody. Um, yeah, I'm working in air celebration for a long time. Uh, I think I'm a senior right now. Um, I will be directing every Saturdays for 10 session and we are going to make a, a puppet, big puppet. Uh, next uh, slide. The, we are going to work in a two big, big puppet. Uh, this time, uh, the two puppets are going to be like, I call 3D puppet, all body moving. And uh, I, I mean body because the puppeteer is going to be into the into the big puppet. So usually we work in a like banner puppet with a flat head, not too much 3D on the top of the puppeteer with just a banner showing the subject we want to show the people. But this time we are going to make two puppet, like body, body puppet with the puppeteer inside. And one is called Urban Garden. So we are going to represent um, different garden. These are going to be like a spirit, a, a, a puppet spirits. Yeah, we already made one last year and I think was very, a good effect and in terms of uh, how communicate with the people is a little bit like people think it's a person, big person. So I think it's a good idea to make uh, a two of this. Um, we are going to include many different things we find in the community garden. Next picture. Um, so we can include different species of plant, vegetables, fruit, insect, animal that inhabit in the, the garden. So these are just simple sketches. Uh, usually we get better than the, the drawing art because we have very talented people working in this workshop, but also people, they don't have any experience. So it's 
everybody invite, invited to help. I am a facilitator in this. I can make the design, but from actually the the, the, the day we are working, many, many uh, ideas um, are inkling in these um, certain ideas I have. So more people working in this project is better. Not necessarily everybody need to know exactly what they want to do. So many people learn about how we use clay. We are going to use clay for the head. This is going to be all head, 3D head. Uh, and we are going to sew, we are going to paint and muslin, and we are going to also represent different garden in the necklace. Uh, next picture show another spirit puppet. The spirit is called Water, Water River, uh, where we are going to include a climate solution. We are repeating many, many, many times about this concept, but it's good. Uh, it's, 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 it's good to continue uh, focusing on this concept because the idea of our um, workshop is made the people are aware about what is going on connected to climate change, but also what happened in the local area where we are um, focusing our projects. Um, we include uh, this this face here in the picture um, is going to make with clay uh, and also we are going to work in different props connected with the uh, title of um, the, the puppet. Next picture. Uh, yeah, uh, that that's are some ideas of um, uh, also including the necklace, the name of a climate solution. Uh, I have to tell you, this workshop is not just uh, receive people working as a volunteer, but also talk about the subject. Many, many people are also into all this um, um, concept. Many, many people know a lot and some people they don't know and about what's going on. So it's a Intense session, we learn a lot about not just how working clay, how make a mold, how working paper mache, and also <laughs> is learn about what what are all these subjects. Um, I think this is the last picture. So, yeah, I invite everybody if you want to enjoy. Thank you, Lucrecia. Mm. Hey, everybody! <laughs> there we are again. And now um, we'll go to our new artist in residence who will be running both the bio art and costume workshops also on Saturday. And that is Sika Foyer. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sika Foyer and um, I'm originally from West Africa. So my work always celebrates life in water, earth, air, and fire. So when I was um, introduced to the Earth Celebration um, festivities, I was very excited about it. So I wanted to, my work already, um, whether it's implicit or not, you know, we always talk about water, earth, air, and fire. And water for me is, uh, source of everything. Um, so when I'm looking at the water work, I'm thinking about all the animals in the water and the, the, the veget vegetation in water. The, uh, we have also deity in Africa that we call Mami Wata, which always comes to people through water and sometimes it's a pers they personify whether a female or male, but um, it's well celebrated in all West Africa. So uh, can I see the, the next uh, flyer, please? So uh, when we, I wanted to design all the costumes and address the materiality and its you know, significance. So everything that we have, we're using has some sign or symbols that I want 
the audience and even the participant to understand like what fire represent, for instance, what water represent, for instance, what air represent. And the fire is also the energy that we have. And air is like you breathe in air. It's a source of energy, source of life as well. And the symbols also, they are very significant. Um, Sometimes I want people to look at what is hidden in plain sight. So who is wearing the costume and what are they hiding? What is the color of their skin? You know, so all the things that the, the costume will embody, I want the audience to be curious and maybe ask questions. And if they're not asking questions, maybe do their own investigation about it. And um, I talk also about the right of opacity. When you wear costume most of the time, it's like, you're, you have an image that you're projecting. At the same time, you're hiding something. And sometimes it's okay when people don't understand it. So you have that power to just be who you are. And usually when you have costume and festivals, that's what we're, we, we're, we're celebrating, that I am happy in my body, however I am, and you can welcome me or not. So that's also a celebration behind the, the costume that I designed. And I talk about shape, shape, shape and form. And in Africa, I mean, when I came here, I came here in like 1990 and I was so overwhelmed by what beauty is. In Africa, beauty can take so many different shapes. You can be tall and skinny, very, very big, large, and you're beautiful. So everybody celebrated as beautiful. And here, <clears throat> I think things, things are changing, but you have that mannequin that is beautiful and the size has to be zero or two. <laughs> and uh, my first years, I have to create things to represent that image of beauty. So in this costume, although I have different forms, I want to have the opportunity or have that audience participate in the creation of this costume where we celebrate all shape and forms. There's beauty in everything. Next. So this one is uh, urban garden, I call it. And I'm, I wanna use all the uh, exotic or like vine branches. In a way, the urban garden is also the secret garden. And when you think about the, the Christianity, you know, you have Adam and Eve in that garden, and you have these original birds, you have fruits, and you have vines, you know, so that we have that. But if you are not Christian, and you're thinking about that urban garden, you talk, you're thinking about also that tree of life that we talked about. So you go to that garden and you, you take the any um, leaves that you take in that garden and you eat it, then you get healthy. It's like you get uh, extra life, extra energy for life. And uh, I, I, I wanted to create something in the middle as a heart. And at the same time, it's white and it's, it's almost like there is a see-through to it into the next it's a portal into the next universe, the next world, or the next secret garden that we all wanted to go to. And um, I, at the, it's more like the pelvic area. I have uh, something like uh, either female or a mask of a person. And that also is a significant, a significant symbols in, for the costume. Although I created this, I wanted the, uh, the participant to, to imagine how they can make it happen. And um, so it, it, it doesn't have to be fixed. I like my work to be more like improvisational. So we're going with whatever we have available for us. And at the same time, we're imagining how to celebrate that urban garden, that secret garden. And the color composition also are very important in this. Uh, I will use blue, red, the green, you know, or like a hunter green and uh, the yellow 
all pinkish. See, purple. good. Can you yes. can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. No, I'm just saying because we're supposed to keep the presentations to five minutes. Okay. And we're going over. So why don't you move through the the next following? Okay. Can we see quickly. the next one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the, this one is called Water River, and um, we'll use uh, the seaweed and seashells and lace fabric to create this morph uh, costume um, and a little bit of resemblance to the Mami Wata I talked about earlier. So next. And here I have that bio art zero waste. So I wanted to use the um, um, kombucha leather and also the mycelium leather to create this. It's almost like a wedding gown or a festival or a, um, sensual attire to celebrate the bio art. Next. These are more like my work, uh, existing work that I have. I won't stay too much on them, but if you take a closer look, they're all natural, um, environmental uh, process of making. And I use them as an installation piece or symbolic piece. Here we have the seashells, we have our oyster shells and chestnut, which I will have also in some of the costumes. And we have a driftwood and leather also here. And I did this in um, my recent residency. Next. Another sort of costume or uh, armor that I call Trojan horse. And these are made of fabric and paper. Next. Here there is actual, it's like a deity. And I have that over and over in my work. That's why my uh, water costume is based on my Miwata transformation. And here is a transformation of a deity. Uh, also fabric and um, this garden material and wood. Next. Uh, I use also um, coffee grinds in my work. And this one have coffee grinds, yarn and wood. Next. Fabrics. Great, Sika. I, you know, and everybody, you know, the workshops are starting up in March. So um, thank you, Sika. Um, and I just want to remind everybody who's here, I think um, both Maya and Eliza, you've put reminders in the chat about the closed captioning that this meeting is closed caption enabled. So if people need the text for the audio, um, it's on the far right under more, you can enable the closed captioning. Um, so our next speaker is Kathy Kreutzberg, who's also a local artist who's been working um, and a gardener closely on the Lower East Side and has been running the bio arts um, workshops last year, as well as creating the bioremediation sculpture. So um, Kathy will explain a little bit more about her project. Hi, everybody. So um, last year, uh, when I was involved with Earth Celebrations, um, I had two different roles. Um, one was to run the workshops um, with kombucha leather and costuming, um, the bio arts, different types of bio arts, um, my, growing mycelium. And um, these are two examples of um, of artworks that we created. Um, the one on the left is the uh, the belly dancing uh, skirts that we made that make sound. Um, they're all made with um, bamboo and uh, different kinds of uh, silverware actually that was found in, um, in compost, believe it or not, people throw their silverware around. Um, and then on the right, <clears throat> is an example of kombucha leather uh, panel that we made and um, it was dyed and painted with um, with India ink. Okay, next. 
And uh, so the, together, I tried to make um, the costumes go all together uh, <clears throat> with all of the different bio art materials. So on my on the left there, I'm actually wearing the costume. Um, and on the right, um, I'll go from head to toe. First on the headdress, uh, there's mycelium that's been um, painted with <clears throat> um, different spices um, and and then um, we have uh, Vir Virginia creeper vines uh, that we used for the crowns. Um, again, there's the uh, skirt uh, made with um, the different like bamboo and the spoons from the compost and the top. That's the top that was actually sewn onto canvas um, so that you know it was comfortable to wear. Okay, next. Um, this is another picture of the same thing, and what uh, the shiny uh, parts are actually a sequence that was adapted from. Um, COVID masks and COVID tests, the, it's the Mylar packaging. So I figured using bio, um, these are biomaterials of a different sort, um, biomedical materials, I guess. And uh, so we collected um, lots of these COVID masks and um, COVID tests, and then uh, cut them all out and strung them together so that there is at least some sparkle in the costuming. Okay, next. This is um, this is the offering to the East River. This was um, given. This was lowered into the East River, and, and it floated away at the end of our um, our long parade day. Um, this is all made out of Virginia creeper, and um, the flowers were um, you know cut flowers from various occasions that were then incorporated into the, the body. So it's a seated figure and sort of in a yoga pose. Um, and uh, it's sitting on a bamboo um, and sitting on a bamboo raft. Next. And there is, uh, of course, in the background on the left um, is Lucretia's beautiful masks. Um, and then the bicycle, I, I was riding, um, I was riding <clears throat> the, the figure around for the entire, um, the entire procession was, it was at the end of the procession or somewhere in there for the entire day. Okay, next. Uh, this is showing the, um, the offering, the river offering the bio remediation uh, figure and it shows as it was lowered into the East River during a very um, spiritual and festival festive um, um, musical interlude. Uh, it was lowered in and then we threw flower petals uh, right over the figure as it floated away and it actually floated for a while. And you never know if these things are gonna float or not, but this one floated for a while. Okay, next. Uh, this, I will just go over this quickly. This was one, the process of creating kombucha leather, which is very, um, it's quite a long process and you have to have very accommodating uh, people helping you do it because it has an odor, a strong odor. Um, it's also, <laughs> it, it starts out with kombucha, then it, it creates this a uh, mat of um, yeast and bacteria that is then dried maybe for like a week. And then at the bottom right, you can see what the kombucha leather turns out looking like after it's dry. Next. Um, uh, this is a very, you know, this, I don't know if I need to go into this too much. I won't be doing kombucha leather um, for this event, except maybe a little bit. Um, so I kind of mentioned how it's uh, the interwoven layers of cellulose um, and that 
that's created um, to protect bacteria and yeast from the dryness. And then that's what creates the cellulose layers as the yeast is fermenting. And it is really strong. The stuff is really tough. And it, it does have, it smells kind of nice. And okay, next. Um, when we were make, doing workshops, we added um, turmeric powder to the leather to give it that beautiful orange color. Um, and then we used India ink, which is actually carbon, um, to paint uh, designs on top of that. And um, so, some of the participants were incredible artists. Next. Uh, this is um, uh, the macrame. We're bringing back the old days of macrame, and they're creating the um, the belly dancing skirts here. Um, they're macrame or tied knots. Uh, most of these people had never done macrame. Um, it was kind of a fad when I was younger, uh, and so we used that um, kind of to create sort of this. It looks almost like a netting or, or it's very loose and then added, you know, of course, we added the chimes at the bottom. Next. Uh, this is the um, mask. Um, this artist on the left came and made this very, um, uh, it's dense, uh, beautiful, um, sparkly, uh, the the mat, um, mylar packaging and turning it into these long um, sort of strands that were used for headdresses and for the skirts just in general to make it more colorful. So Kathy we should probably get to the end because we're way over the time oh yeah. I'm sorry okay yeah. and so, go, yeah, go. I don't need to go into too much detail this is the mycelium I won't be doing mycelium this year for this project and egg tempera paint um, was used for color. Okay, um, headdresses, keep going. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. We're all looking forward to the bioremediation sculpture. And now we'll hear from uh, Catherine Fraging, who leads the collaborative painting projects. Okay, go go on. Um, of course, um, the gardens and the garden system have embraced the UN sustainable goals. And um, each of the gardens has uh, elected to undertake some of the goals that the UN's proposed. Go to the next. So um, one of our projects, we've been doing these since uh, 2018, but one of our projects was to do a mandala, which highlights how those correlations uh, match the UN goals or, or correlate between the UN goals and the gar different gardens. And this mural really shows um, that correlation. Go next. <clears throat> uh, but originally uh, we started sort of bringing out these goals by focusing on each garden and here you see the name of the garden and then what their climate solution is and then an illustration of that under each one. And these were done uh, next. <clears throat> uh, these were done uh, by uh, interviewing uh, gardeners, talking to them about what they're doing, what their goals are, what their successes are. Next. <clears throat> Here's another set from next. Uh, next. And so the way this happens is that um, after the interviews and a lot of photography and collecting photographs by gardeners, I assemble these things in black and white. And then the gardeners come and meet me at a community center or sidewalk or school and we fill them in. We edit them. They change them. Um, but there's sort of a base drawing there for them to uh, play off of next. And we did some, once we did the gardens, we also did a series of murals that highlighted um, areas of the uh, East River Guard, East River uh, Park, and also other neighborhood amenities, such as rooftop gardens and, and uh, 
community gardening. Yeah, next. So here's some of the murals of of that. Go ahead. Next. You can actually just go through these now as I talk, because there's just a series of these. Um, <clears throat> but this year, our project, you can keep going. Um, our project is to revisit some of these um, gardens and see how they're doing and seeing what their what solution they're taking on now. And um, so that these black and white stop there, these black and white um, um, base drawings will all be amended and we'll come up with some new ones for the different gardens next. And uh, for and some of them have changed their, uh, for instance, La Plaza uh, is got a huge solar array there, and they're going to be featuring solar next. And uh, the Ninth Street Community Center, uh, which was solar, is really more of a pollinator and recycling garden. And then also it's been renamed. Um, I've forgotten the name of this couple right now, but it's been renamed after this gentleman in the center. Next. Next. So we'll be redoing them, and then um, they get displayed on at 9th and C. We have a huge uh, display of all of them all in one place. And uh, so my task right now is to go back and um, get new images to put together into these collages and uh, get um, more gardeners invested in these community gatherings we have to uh, assemble these. And that's what my workshops will be about. I think that's it. Thank you, Katie. Now it's my turn. And do um, interrupt me if I go too long, because I don't want to. So um, yeah, Cameron, you can pull up my presentation. Great. So, you know, go through these first two. Um, so the Ecological City Project uh, Procession for Climate Solutions was started in 2018, but it really goes back. I mean, this is now I'm going into the 33rd year of doing these kind of projects in the neighborhood, which started with the procession to save the gardens, which helped build um, a coalition effort that ended up leading to, thankfully, um, you know, such great impact in having many of the gardens transferred to the Parks Department back in 2002. Um, so we still have the gardens, but back then when we were trying to preserve the gardens from slated destruction and development, we were really thinking about, oh, we're preserving essential open space, a place for community people to gather. We're preserving outdoor environmental classrooms, but I don't think we were really framing it with um, we're preserving climate solutions. So it was really Hurricane Sandy when the Lower East Side flooded and the gardens absorbed the flood water. That it was really overnight, I think, a recognition that the gardens being poor surfaces could absorb flood water. And then looking at all the other green infrastructure that existed um, within the community gardens. Next. So here are some, I mean, there is rainwater harvesting going on between ponds and rain barrels. There are solar microgrids um, being installed for off-grid power. There are what they call bioswales with streams and pebbles to filter pollution runoff. Um, and people are doing sustainable growing of uh, vegetables and food. Um, so, and, and then some of them have pollinator gardens. So um, anyway, that was going on in the gardens, but post Hurricane Sandy, they were given a federal grant and that helped enhance some of the structures um, and green infrastructure that exists. Next. Um, then another thing that happened post Hurricane Sandy was the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. So when we started it, it was there was an original community engaged design plan that many in the neighborhood were involved with. And um, it was not until we were done with the first year pageant going into the second year in the fall that the mayor de Blasio had gotten rid of the original plan and came up with another plan that many in the community were uh, not happy with uh, for a variety of, of reasons and the tearing down of many trees and other design uh, projects that were had been popular in the original plan that got um, taken away. 
So it's now underway in the neighborhood um, with part of the park closed for many years. Next. Uh, that's just an overview. You can go of the park next. Um, so originally we had these meetings, they were in person, but since COVID we've kept it now as a Zoom, that way more people can join and attend from wherever they may be next. Um, this shows the neighborhood with the community gardens. There are close to 50 right now. Back in the 90s, there were over 60 in the neighborhood. Next. Um, so the pageant, we've identified 21 sites um, with embedded climate solutions. Um, so it includes 12 or more community gardens, several neighborhood sites, including the Earth School's Green Roof, Sixth Street Community Center's Rooftop Beef Farm, and uh, five sites along uh, the waterfront. And because the park is closed, we're now um, have been using the section between 6th and 13th Street. Next. Um, so this enumerates some of the climate solutions um, that Katie also referred to. So whether it's visual art or performances, um, these are some of the solutions that get explored and celebrated at each of the sites. Next. Um, so the process starts um, every year in the fall with building of partnerships um, with the artists, listening to what the concept and issues are, and then designing um, both costumes and puppets and other visual art. Um, so here you see this is Lucrecia's drawings from some years ago. Next. Um, and then we get to March, like this year. So there'll be workshops every Saturday um, from March through May 4th with the pageant on Saturday, May 11th, where anyone can sign up on Eventbrite um, and join, but they can sign up for both costume and the puppet workshops next. Um, so here we are working on the puppets last year. Uh, next and some images of people sewing and uh, also working on costuming, integrating different natural dyes and bat and boo and rattan, next. And this was Kathy Kreutzberg's uh, zero waste costume from some years ago with mycelium pieces, seaweed and kombucha leather, next. Um, and the bioremediation sculpture in the early years was created by the artist D.D. Moucher. Um, and this is a picture of hers with willow branches and also beneficial bioremediation nutrients. Next. And some uh, pictures from Katie's collaborative mural projects engaging children in the neighborhood. And then some of the workshops, instead of just using paint out of the bottle, we've been trying to make paint using fruits, vegetables, and plants. So that's another fun educational project that um, many in schools um, like to do. And we brought in theater directors to collaborate with um, participants from Goals and, and residents from NYCHA housing to develop a performance about um, surviving Hurricane Sandy, which was performed on the waterfront. Next. Um, so then we get to the procession. So I'll just, um, I don't want to go over too much. So why don't we just go through a few of the pictures quickly. You'll see the costumes um, representing the different solutions, the puppets, just to give you a sense of it. Um, Michelle Brody's flood map costume and sustainable development goals next. Um, last year, we incorporated photo transfers into the costumes next. Um, and then here is Katie holding up one of the composting banners at East Side Outside Community Garden um, for the ceremony there. Um, and then some of the ceremonies are followed by performances of dance, music, theater, or poetry. Next. Um, and each garden can offer water collected at the garden that then gets offered to the river at the end of the day. Next. Um, here are children from the Children's Workshop School celebrating their art and science um, fair and participation in the pageant, singing a song. Next. 
um, just community participants following along in this beautiful campus garden with the raised beds. Um, it really is incredible going in and out from the urban concrete streets into these green spaces throughout the day. Next. Um, girls from the Lower East Side Girls Club singing a song for solar. Next. And here are some of the puppets representing regenerative sustainability and climate drawdown solutions. Uh, next. Um, so then even some of the dances that get created celebrate, like this is a green oasis celebrating um, the pollinator garden. And Lower East Side Girls Club also made pollinator costumes. Um, so here they are as well. So it's really an opportunity for many in the community to join in um, and contribute to one of the themes. Next. Um, and children participate both in the gardens as well as the through the workshops and then in the performances. Next. Um, we have songs uh, for the water harvesting pond at 6th Street and Avenue B Garden. Next. And then I think we'll end here. So um, this is the Earth School and the kids, you know, the green roof is on the roof. So a lot of people can't see it, but there were photographs and we integrated a whole um, program, um, educational program one year where um, all the students worked on this wearable mural um, and other um, costuming and performance projects. So you can go to the next and I think we'll, and it there, there's there we are with the the green roof. So uh, yeah, so now I think I'd like to transition over to some of our partners and their projects. So um, Shahida um, from Infinite Movement and also working at Goals will um, present. Thanks. Hello, people. Happy Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you, Felicia, for making this. Um, for creating this initiative and for sustaining it for so long because it's super important for us in our community. And so I just want to just pay homage to you for your consistency around that um, and seeing everyone who's on the call, young and old, vets and and everyone. I just think that is super important. I really just want to just tell you, Felicia, that I do appreciate you for this and um, and I thank you. Um, so Infinite Movement was created to um, heal through the arts. Um, and so back, uh, I initially started with you all through uh, Good Old Lower East Side um, before Sandy. And um, so the work that I've done with uh, this um, initiative was since then and through then. But today what I'll be speaking about mainly is the work that I did um Right before Sandy, um, right before the park closure, and um, and I really think that it's important to just acknowledge that Infinite Movement, as well as Good Old Lower East Side, has always been um a champion of the community, specifically NYCHA residents, rent regulated regular re um, residents, and those who have do not have necessarily have a voice around environmental justice and climate justice, right? People who forget that when Sandy happened, they were the most impacted. Um, loss of power, loss of phone access, food, et cetera, et cetera. So I selected They Don't Really Care About Us by Michael Jackson for some of the younger folks. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's important to acknowledge that um, this has been a, about a 40 40 year process of acknowledging the fact that climate change is really happening. Um, so this was our performance in 2021 on the FDR Drive. Um, and these are youth actually, uh, Lenore from Grand, uh, Henry Street Settlement can attest to this. Um, I use, utilize and I partnered with them back then to um, have a bunch of young people perform and dance. Um, uh, to they don't really care about us. This is Lanaya. She is now going to be 18 years old, graduating from Nest <laughs> um, uh, in Lower East Side. So it's just great to see her and her growth. Next slide, please. And so 
people often worry about and think about the birds and the bees, right? So I just want to speak about the people and the families who live in NYCHA housing who are immediately impacted by climate change, right? And air quality, right? Being right next to the FDR drive. Um, and so this is for, this is representing those folks, me. I was born and raised in Baruch's Project, 521 and then 549. And so it's important for us to acknowledge the fact that NYCHA has disinvested in, um, uh, excuse me, federal, the federal government disinvested in NYCHA housing or public housing for about 40 to 50 years. And it induced the uh, public health uh, uh, discrepancies, health discrepancies of folks who live in NYCHA housing. Um, and so we historically have been neglected. And there are actually 21 housing developments in the Lower East Side. I don't know if folks know about that, but there are prime, it's prime real estate to live right there, right? So it's important for us to acknowledge that and to think about the folks who are impacted by that, not just the, the, the ecology of it all, but it's also a human issue, right? Human rights issue. Next slide, please. And so these are some of the young people. They span from living in Reese houses to Lillian Wall houses, Baruch houses, uh, Velatic houses, as well as LaGuardia houses. Um, as we know, we just saw in the news recently, there's been a whole lot of indictments about folks doing really sketchy things in NYCHA. Um, but at the end of the day, these are the young people's faces who are impacted by that. Half of these young ladies and young men who are here have asthma and it's not because it's a it's a hereditary thing right it's because there's mold in their apartments um there's vermin in their communities and we have to acknowledge that as well and um with uh sandy it exasperated those um health issues and the public health issues that we have to definitely acknowledge and think about every day this is their their environment goes beyond uh, it's, it's their apartments, it's their homes, it's their households. It's just not outside, right? So they are facing um, challenges even from birth if they're raised in, born and raised in housing developments. Next slide, please. So Infinite Movement's platform is, and as well as Good All Lower East Side, is basically to keep people safe and happy and healthy in their homes, in their communities, right? So we utilize that through artistic expression. Um, the pictures that I saw recently, there, um, there's just one of the installments that I've worked with, um, Miss Felicia. With I initially I started with Good All Lower East Side, and then I did my own thing, um, moving forward. But I just need to, um, reiterate that my commitment and good old Lower East Side commitment and Infinite Movement's commitment is to be uh, the bridge or the, the voice of the people who live in these environments who are often overseen, right? Who are often used as pictures and other people's uh, um, websites, et cetera, et cetera, who don't necessarily experience and relate to the the daily impact that's really affecting us on and health health wise and environmental wise and climate justice wise on an everyday basis. So I'm committed to shedding light on that and the realities that we face on a daily basis. Um and I believe that might be my next last slide, right, Felicia? Yep. So I want to I just want to really quickly because I'm trying to make it short and sweet because I know there's a lot of folks. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to um, encourage folks to reach out to me. I'll, I'll be doing a community assessment with Good Old Lower East Side and CUNY and NIJA. That's the New York City uh, Environmental Justice Alliance um, in the near future about what the state of environmental and climate justice is for our community. I'm not sure how long it's been since someone has done that, but I feel like it's time for us to acknowledge and understand what it means, right, for everyone who not only NYCHA residents, um, folks who live in rate regulated housing and beyond to really um, find out what it is that we're dealing with, right? Even after Sandy, with, uh, even after, while Esker is being built, what are our commitments? What do we feel is needed? And how can we represent that in a larger um, space in terms of policy, in terms of how we move forward? And so uh, feel free to reach out to me. My name is Shahida Smith. I'm with Good All Over East Side. I also am the, C the CEO, Executive Director of Infinite Movement. And I think that is very important that we have a voice. 
and what's going on. And if we don't use our voice and we do not say what it is for us to wake up in the morning, if, if garbage is not collected, if we wake up in the morning and see only concrete and no green spaces, what is that doing to our health? What is that doing to our environment? So I really implore you. I look out. I, I look to connect with folks who are on this call so that we can really speak to what's going on in our community. I'm very excited about this. I thank you again, Felicia, for this platform, right, and how we move forward. And I thank all the artists who are combining these issues to really bring light to it because creative solutions are the way because we need to reach the people. And people do not want to sit and look at PowerPoints all day about what's going on. We need to really reach people in terms of connecting with them on a different level. So I thank you again, Felicia, Catherine, all the folks who are on this call, all the young people who are on this call. Um, climate justice is not going to happen overnight. It's something that definitely has to be sustainable. And this is the platform and this is the space for us to work together and to really make that happen. So again, I just want to say if anyone wants to connect with me, please get in contact with me. My name is Shahida. It's Shahida at Good Old Lower East Side at goals.org. And let's Shahida, make Shahida, you can put it in the chat. Put it I in will the do chat. that too. I'm gonna put it, put in, it the in the chat. chat. Put it in the chat. I will. And we can move on to the next person. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening and is safe and healthy. Peace and blessings. Thank you, Shahida. Wow. Okay. That was an inspiration. As always, I mean, Shahida is amazing. Um, so is um, Sixth Street Community Center. Are you there? Yeah. Hi, so us. Okay, great. Cool. Okay. Hi, everyone. We are the program coordinators of our youth program. We're Sixth Street Community Center. We're located on East 6 between Avenue B and C, if you didn't know. And um, yeah, last year we did a mini original play with our youth. And this year we are going to be doing an original song and dance. And yeah. who are you? Oh, and I'm Sam. <laughs> I'm Ivy. <laughs> um, yeah, next slide. All right, so who we are, Sixth Street, we have a lot of different programs, including our youth program and the teen climate justice program. We do a lot of climate justice and urban sustainability work, and we'll get on to some of our other programs in the next slide. So next one. All right, so we started um, in 1978 as we emerged from the homesteading movement. And now we do a lot of like housing, food justice work, teen and youth development programs. Um, yeah, next. And Dave's over. We have many different programs. We have our community supported agriculture, the CSA, Mutual Aid Kitchen, which has been supporting a lot of the migrants lately. Our food distribution, which happens around like twice a month. And we have a community fridge, which we're working on putting on the sidewalk so it's easier to access. Yes. And our youth and teen programs next. Okay. So this is our, um, as we said, Sam and I run the youth program. And the youth program does like a lot of urban sustainability and climate justice work. We do cooking, gardening. Uh, we do a lot of like art based programming surrounding climate justice, we just did a play this winter actually that Sam directed about food insecurity and how to address that as even young people within our communities. Um, and then the teen climate justice does a lot more like action-based work and they do a lot of lobbying. They go to Albany a lot and like talk with and to our representatives. So that's really awesome. Um, next. This is an image of our community fridge and um, food distribution. Like I said, we do pretty often. Next slide. Yeah, this is some of the work that the teens have been doing. Up in the left corner is the director of our teen program, Anna. She's super awesome. And this is some um, teens at protests. This looks like left corner in the bottom we work with um, No North Brooklyn Pipeline. We also work with New York renews um, public power and a lot of like different climate justice coalitions that overlap with our work. Next. Um, so this is lots of pictures of our youth program in CSA. We have our community supported agriculture is another um, urban sustainability initiative that's been going on for many, many years. Um, and the picture on the top is of the beehives 
that our neighbor and Sixth Street friend Ray runs the beehives on the roof. Um, Teen Climate Justice Program on the left picture at one of the, at the Battery Park Urban Farm. Um, yeah, next. Cool, and that is it. Wait, there should be one more slide in there, but there is a slide that I guess it didn't get uploaded. We just wanted to also add that our Teen Climate Justice Program and our youth program um, is enrolling for summer. So if you would like to be like in your organization or it, even just like individuals in your community would be interested in receiving information about our summer programs for youth and teens, please put your email in the chat and we will reach out to you directly and send you flyers and information on how to like enroll if you have kids or know people that are interested. Yes, and we're also looking to hire two for summer, um, a, youth, a youth educator. So if you're interested in, your, in yourself, please put your email in the chat and we can reach out to you and we'll put our email as well. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. So we'll put up Dakeem's um, presentation. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. I promise um, my presentation will be very short and sweet. Um, it's been a long day. Uh, my name is Dakeem Duncan. I'm the uh, program director for the Beacon program, which is part of the university settlement um, group of uh, agent, um, CBOs, community-based organizations. And we're proud to, we've been a partner with um, Felicia and her organization, um, at least for the three, three or four years since the pandemic that I've been here, um, I believe the partnership may have existed prior to the pre-pandemic. Um, and also I think at one of our other sites, I think PS63, I think, or maybe 134. Um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, university settlement. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, um, we are one of the oldest settlement. We're the oldest settlement house um, in New York City, dating back to um, the 1890s. Um, we are a um, a, a, a organization that really builds on the community strength and partners with um, sites in the Lower East Side. My my specific program, the Beacon program, we operate on on the Lower East Side on East 12th Street out of University. I'm mean, excuse me, out of East Side Community School, uh, and we basically offer programming for anyone from basically elementary kids all the way to adults. Um, our goals is you know we provide activities for young people. Um, that builds their um, builds their their character, builds their strength. Um, we basically are trying to prepare our young folks for the um, next stages in their lives. Um, in our capacity and our partnership here, we've um, partnered with uh, Felicia and her organization, and we've I believe it was Catherine, I believe it was that's come out um, to help us um, uh, create art art pieces for the pageant. You can go to the next slide. Um, these are just some pictures that I, I picked up of our last um, program. Um, and as you can see, we, um, our kids, uh, these all of our kids are our um, from our arts and crafts activities. Um, and they came in and they spent the, the whole Friday afternoon um, painting these great um, uh, posters and murals. That were actually that were put up in the the pageant. Uh, the program we are we're very community focused. Uh, so any of the needs of our community, like my previous um, directors before me, uh, Shadia, I believe it was. I so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, we are um, very, you know, we're very pro community and anything that helps our community, and. As we all know, the the climate situation here in the Lower East Side def definitely affects our our kids and our families and our community. So we're very we're very glad to be a partner, and we look forward to working with with um, this organization in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Akeem. Hello, everyone. I'm Lenore Cologne. I'm the assistant director of After School and Camp Services for Henry Street Settlement. I oversee the Boys and Girls Republic Community Center on 6th Street between Avenue D and the FDR Drive. 
as well as the Jake Reese Cornerstone on Avenue D between uh, Avenue D between Sixth and Seventh Street. Um, our programs offer after school and day camp for children in kindergarten through eighth grade, as well as sports and recreation for middle school to young adults on evenings and weekends. Our programs are based on empowering youth through self-government, social and emotional learning, and arts. We have partnered with Earth Celebration for over 20 years. Um, my son, who is now 28 years old, was an eight-year-old who created puppets with Felicia way back when. Um, mm -hmm. We watched him the parades and all that stuff. Um, and for the past couple of years, what we have been doing is our older youth have been working on creating murals with um, Earth Celebration and also talking about the things in their community that they want to make better. Great. I'm short and sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lenore. Looking forward. Great. So um, now we'll go to Savio, who was a participant last year from School of Visual Arts Bio, Bio Art Lab. And he has some ideas for this year's collaboration. Yeah. Thank you, Felicia. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Savio. Um, I'm a sustainable artist from the Bronx, um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the uh, past projects and also what we're planning on doing this year. So you can go to the next slide. So last year, um, I led a group uh, from SVA Bio Art Lab, and um, we created these ceramic bee cups um, in order to help uh, local pollinators uh, safely have access to water. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, these are these little uh, woodcut sort of tags that we added to the um, bee cups, basically just informing people um, why they're there. Um, and it was also a part of the ceremony. Um, so that was really fun. I got to wear these awesome costumes. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, here are some examples of the bee cups that we made. Um, we got to use our ceramics studio and SVA to create them. So that was very fun um, and overall just a great experience. So, and you can go to the next slide. So there I am. I had dreadlocks at that time um, wearing the pollinator costume. Um, and there's my friend wearing her costume. So as you can see, we had quite a bit of fun. Um, and so I just graduated SVA. Um, you can go to the next slide. And now I'm actually involved in this organization, Artistic Noise, um, which is a Harlem-based organization um, that's youth-centered. Um, basically focusing on system impacted youth, uh, young people that have been involved in uh, juvenile detention or residential treatment facilities, things of that nature. Um, and Artistic Noise actually does um, an annual collaboration with SVA Art Therapy, um, where we do this mural project. So you can see um, that's one of the participants creating a mural. And um, I actually got involved, um, or I went to SVA through Artistic Noise, um, through the mural project, being a participant in Artistic Noise, and then um, actually applying and getting into SVA and kind of going through that whole thing. And so it's very full, so full circle for me. Um, now I'm back um, working as a teaching artist um, at Artistic Noise, and I hoping that we can collaborate um, with Earth Celebrations um, to get some of our young people um, uh, helping with the puppets and costume making and any um, of the art-based work that's being done. Um, also, just a little bit of um, background. So all of the art work that these uh, youth are doing, it's actually paid work. Um, and so it wouldn't be volunteer. Um, but that's a big part of the mission of Artistic Noise is to um, empower youth through art making. 
And so, um, yeah, it would just be a great opportunity and a great um, collaboration. So really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Sebi. I love seeing how all these uh, meetings and collaborations over the years grow and evolve and people connect people to other um, organizations. So now we're going to move over to our environmental experts. And these are local um, community people who um, have specialized in different areas. So Frederick uh, Lavrat is a gardener at Green Oasis and I think a professional architect as well. And he will um, share his presentation. Yes, hi, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm just one of the members of a community garden, which obviously is a community and it's strange to be an individual representing a community, but Green Oasis Garden and Gilbert Garden is a fantastic community of people who live in the neighborhood mostly. And uh, you probably know the history of all those gardens, which were basically taken over by the community after landlord mostly organized to have their building burned down because they couldn't collect the rent anymore during the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, so this is the front of the website of Green Oasis Garden. So if you want to just type Green Oasis uh, NYC. Dot org, you can uh, see some of the activity. Uh, next, please. Uh, it's located on 8th Street uh, on the east of Tompkins Square Park between, probably all know the neighborhood of the East Village here. There are quite a number of uh, community garden. Next, please. Um, it's uh, really a green oasis in the sense that as you can see, it's in the middle of Manhattan. It's, uh, or at least on the edge of Manhattan. And it's quite amazing to have a place for children to run around barefoot, to have bonfire late at night, to have barbecue with friends, to have performance, dance, music, uh, all of that. It's a kind of a sense of freedom that is uh, quite surprising considering the heavily constructed environment. Next. So it was founded in about 44 years ago, in 1981, maybe 43 years ago. Um, and the main mission statement here is a garden that is for the children, the urban children, to have a place to be in contact with nature. Um, next. So as you can see in this picture, just to have children feeling free to roam around, to experiment, to encounter nature, to play with mud, to play with sand and things, uh, which are not always completely, I mean, uh, which are in fact very difficult for to find in New York City or in Manhattan, and also are not necessarily so easy compatibility uh, with some garden member who would like to keep the garden very clean, to have some flower, to have things. Children have a tendency to pick up flower, to mess up plots sometimes uh, because they're very spontaneous. And uh, so it's really a community and we are not a very strict garden. We are very open to the spirit of nature and the spirit of the children. Next. We have a wonderful gazebo that I had the chance to entirely redo the roof recently with some friends. Um, but I can show you a number of infrastructure we're going to go through, but the main thing is that it's a community. It's a community of very, very diverse people. You have some grandmother, you have some little children, you have some young professional, you have some rich people, some poor people, some people of all different race, color, country, culture, and we all have this mission to preserve our ecosystem and to, you know, occupy that space in a positive way. Next. So the greenery, the garden, the flower is important. We also have a compost system. We have a bokashi system. Um, next. We have a large uh, pond uh, with a little cascade, a koi, uh, beautiful fish. It's quite amazing getting out of the concrete and just looking at those fish who are in fact, are quite urban. If you come by the side of the pool and you clap, they will they will come just like a, a dog or a cat or 
Um, but the, we have a large barbecue, um, quite a number of elements to operate, to work together as a community to maintain those places. Next. And I think through those spaces, we also enjoy having that space to make activity, activity for children from sculpture to uh, pumpkin carving to winter or uh, summer solstice. We do sun, solar print. We do, next please, um, we do tie-dyed. Um, so we we try to find creativity with, with all of that. Next. We have a beehive that is being managed by some expert, but who give workshop, tell people how to do. But again, a lot of it is about participating, doing things together, uh, which is uh, interacting with our physical environment. Next. We have a very nice stage um, and room to sit about 30, 40 people. And I think this is really important to... Uh, make the community through art, through theater performance, play, movie night, music, all sorts of participation. Next. And uh, luckily, we have this gathering of uh, our uh, extended neighborhood through uh, the Ecological City and uh, the Rite of Spring uh, Parade. Uh, so we're always very happy to be one of the stop on this uh, uh, route. Um, but again, the, the garden is open for artists or people who wants to participate, create. We have an artist in residence program. We have a large stage, which we lend to anybody who wants to either paint, draw, perform. So it's a, it's a very nice space that we are happy to have activated by all sorts of people and uh, it's a precious space but it's also a space for the community for engagement of people to to enjoy thank, thank you frederick thank you um great so now we'll hear from dr paul mankowitz um who will be speaking about uh coastal resiliency and climate solutions we're running out of time paul so see if you can just give us a brief overview. I know in the fall we did an exhaustive thing, so um, people can refer back to the um, fall videos that we've posted where Paul really gets into the details of so many inspiring urban climate solutions. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thanks, Lucia. This is very simple. So if we were here when the Lenape were here, the city would have been running a 12-fold greater peak load. Literally, the entire ecosystem, one of the most biologically diverse on the planet, was catching 16,000 tons of carbon every single day, and the temperature would never reach ambient. It was always lower because of the vegetation cover. So that's compared to the 114,000 tons of carbon products per day from the fossil fuels. Next slide shows a very simple way to see this. It's almost hard to believe. But uh, I'll hold this thing up if I can. And it, just if you can imagine uh, the six liters of water, that's two and a half, a little more, I mean, a gallon and a half, every square meter. And you have a choice. You can run it down the combined sewer where <clears throat> at the wastewater treatment plants, it's going to cost you six liters of water to generate the steam to treat it. Or you can literally capture 20 grams of carbon with it and about 4,000 watts of cooling energy, literally regulating the climate, our choice. 27 grams into the atmosphere, 20 grams into the ground. So that's where we are. And that's when people talk about the value of green infrastructure, there she is. And next slide shows the mistake. So here's basically a bunch of concrete poured. This is a partly insane idea, as you'll see in the next slide, because every square every, next slide will show you every cubic meter every cubic yard of concrete produces about 40 400 pounds of carbon dioxide the next slide shows you what that means to capture that at 20 grams of carbon per meter square per day would be nine thousand days so all those thousands of cubic yards of concrete aren't helping the next slide shows a way forward though i think 
the most productive ecological systems on the planet are basically marshes and rainforests and eelgrass. And if you actually built marshes, like we propose, again, too much concrete. Next slide, though, shows another way to go, which is literally surrounding the whole 520 mile edge of New York City with salt marsh. This is only 1,200 acres, but it would filter the equivalent to the total wastewater of New York City between five and 50 times every single day. So life and also getting the children into this is basically the future and it's changing the quality of the water by building a fishery. The next slide. I built this um, at the El Jardin. I also built El Jardin Paraiso and I didn't find a slide of that, but this is basically, this is an industrial landscape and all of that water flows into the soil, into the wetland. We could do this everywhere and the Olmstead parks are great. But every block, you, you can measure how well we're doing. Every third to fifth building, if it had a green wall, it would drop the climate, the temperature in that on that block, and clean the air at the same time. Next slide. Basically, just uh, as you can see, there's up in the top left, there's the temperatures, 90 degree days, 82 degrees underneath those, the vegetation. Next slide. So green, it basically does, it's again, about 20 grams of carbon per square meter of cover. Green wall, green roof is all kind of similar. Next slide. And life works this way. We could repair New York only one way. Decarbonization is a great idea. That will help no children. You have to build ecology everywhere we live. And that's the way forward. It also will reverse climate change locally everywhere, as all the beautiful gardens on the Lower East Side do. I'll stop here. Thank you, Paul. Okay, great, everybody. And now we have... Yeah. Okay, so hi, I'm Wendy Barrera. I'm down here right by the East River, where you might have heard about East River Park and the uh, East Side Coastal Resilience Project. I um, want you to remember, though, that it's the park, even though it's more pretty much wrecked, it's actually 42% open. So please use it. Enjoy it. There's all kinds of wildlife realities there. I saw a red-tailed hawk there yesterday. And be a voice for positive change. So next slide. I just want you to see how half the park is destroyed along the edge, but there's still something there for all of us. We're hoping that someday, like 2026, as they promise, this park will all be open again. We'll see. It'll never be the same, but I did go birding this morning, and there are lots of other things happening along here. Next slide. And it's quite nice to be by the river. Even the compression of the city, the noisiness of it all, you feel very different when you're out along the river. This is the embayment at 6th Street. Next slide. And, um, you know, our parks are really havens of, for all kinds of culture and community and ecology. Um, Tompkins Square Park, even though it also has construction <laughs> underway, um, there's lots you can do there, including bring your compost, your food scraps for composting. Next slide. You know, we're a four seasons community and in any season you can see somebody doing something creative in the park something expressive and interesting and thought-provoking what does this all mean how do we keep it all going next slide um and the park itself the parks themselves you know this one was uh created by peter stuyvesant back in the day and the storms that come through today are really hard on the 200 year old elm trees and other trees there. So we've lost quite a few. There's hopefully other speakers here are gonna tell you about some stewardship efforts in the park, but it's uh, anytime you're there, you can see people from all backgrounds doing all kinds of things. Next one. And next slide, please. Thank you. Um, right outside the park is Avenue B, oops. Next, um, which is an open street, and we just went by it very quickly. You're going too fast oh, now, but Crystal, yeah. go back. Yeah, go back a couple. One more. There. Stop. Yay. Back. Oops. Gosh. Forward. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> but anyhow, Avenue B is an open street. Um, 
There's uh, people campaigning to keep make it open all the time and extend the um, park space itself. Uh, go ahead too, please. Okay, and what on the things that I make me very happy is seeing high school students learning how to take care of the trees. Someone was asking about stewardship, who's doing it. This is um, a neighborhood group. I'm not quite sure who they are, but they actually work on my block third between C and D, which is a pretty tough block and have really transformed it in a very positive way. So when the streets are green, things are calmer, people slow down and it's much more neighborly. Next slide. And um, so that's just a scene from um, the fabulous La Plaza Cultural, which I'm sure Ross will be talking about soon, but everybody, including Earth Celebration, stages events there and makes things happen. You know, it's all up to you. The future is unwritten. It's all up to us, I should say. We have a lot we can do. I'm actually heading into the community board meeting, CB3 Parks. I have things I'm asking for and things I'm questioning. Get Take yourself to the table, folks, and um, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank Thanks, you. Wendy. Um, okay. You can go through the slides. I just came up with four. I'm going to sum up my presentation with four points. So you can just, mm -hmm. it may not, you just get visuals here. So to quickly sum up the current work of the ESCR, Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project in East River Park. Number one, the construction of the flood wall and Esplanade two ball fields and the pedestrian bridges at Coraliers Hook and Delancey Street are going on below East 2nd Street to Montgomery Street. Number two, East River Park north of 2nd Street is still open to the public with entrances at Houston Street, 6th Street, and East 10th Street. Don't let the construction at these entrances deter you from visiting the park. There are three ball fields, the track and field, a playground, and picnic areas open. Number three, the path from East River Park to Stevenson Cove is now open. Stevenson Cove is pretty much open for the exception of where Solar One is. And then number four, actually, if you can just go back one slide, because I want people to see this. This is my fourth point. Um, New York City DOT and Parks will present their Lower East Side East Village Waterfront Study Findings, which is basically new entrances into East River Park to Community Board 3 Transportation Committee next week on Tuesday, February 13th. It's a hybrid meeting, so you can go either in person or via your computer. Please attend. This is extremely important. If you want to know what's going to be happening to your favorite entrance into East River Park. And thank you very much. Thank you, Allie. Yes. Yeah, so now why don't we go to Todd Fernandez, who's going, who has been one of our marshals and is a director of the Earth Bill Project. Um, so why don't we bring Todd up and he can, Todd, if you can just say, you know, keep it to no more than two minutes. Hi, everyone. It's been wonderful hearing all about all your work and uh, the connection to nature that you're keeping alive in New York City. I um, mean, it's always fun to be the marshal, um, trying to keep everyone from getting run over. I've loved those marches. So I'm not going to do this whole presentation in two minutes. It would take about eight. Um, briefly, uh, go to the next slide. My name is Todd Fernandez. I work to get the Equality Act introduced, which is the Gay Civil Rights Bill in Congress. Um, and now I'm working on uh, the Earth Bill. Next slide. The Earth Bill is a science-based flagship legislation with real solutions to build a movement powerful enough to prevail in Congress. And it's really the how we get off fossil fuels and it's the plan to build a movement powerful to enough to change the political status quo. Next slide. It mandates in content, it mandates three main things, 100% renewable electricity, zero emission vehicles, and regenerative agriculture by 2030. So this is electricity, cars, and food, three kitchen table issues, 
our money each month goes to pay those bills. So the idea is it's our right, it's our duty to um, get Congress, make Congress act to force the companies that create these things to do so without the climate pollution that's destroying the future. You can keep moving along on the slides. Um, the real, the main thing, there's some of the co-sponsors, uh, Representative Vespa out from New York is the lead. We have Nadler and Velasquez also from New York. Next slide. Uh, it has real emission reductions calculated by the experts from Project Drawdown. It's basically additional 40% reductions by 2030. Next slide. That puts the Paris Accord, that would achieve the Paris Accord goals and um, really implement that treaty. It were, it's 15 short pages. It stops pollution at the factory. It requires an industry-led smooth transition, requires plans from those industries within a year. And most importantly, the mandates um, create a, a, a clear revenue stream for renewable energy projects that will give guarantees to the private sector to invest and build the energy transition at scale. Um, it's next, we'll keep going, next slide. The real point here is it's a strategy to unify a movement. And this movement needs a flagship bill like the Civil Rights Act or the Equality Act or other bills. Um, and so the goal is to unite the environmental movement, civil society more broadly, and then the public at large. And it's designed to be bipartisan in that it's, it puts industry in charge of these transitions, but with real mandates in law. Um, but it's small government and um, clear rules. In, next slide. We're organized by district teams. We're a grassroots volunteer organization working across the country right now. Um, we're, we need this bill to call the political question, are you for the pollution or for the planet? Um, this is the political impasse that we're at. Everyone knows we have the basically the technology and everything's moving in the right direction, but it's not fast enough. And that's because the political resistance is protecting big oil and big ag. Um, this movement presents the Achilles heel of those oligarchies that never existed before, where there's enough people concerned and enough external pressures driving this that we could probably, that we, I believe we, if we united, we could topple big ag and big oil and reclaim our democracy in the process. So we're asking for everyone's help. We're getting going after new sponsors. We're asking for organizational endorsements. We've had a slew of them recently with Earth Justice and Interfaith Power and Light. There's already over 140 organizations. Um, we had a meeting today with Representative Lawler. I had meetings with NRDC and LCV, League of Conservation Voters, today. So we're finally getting Big Greens to uh, embrace the idea of a flagship piece of legislation. And once we get that ball in motion, that snowball rolling, I feel like we're gonna have um, a movement that we can be inspired by, that'll lead us all to fight for something we can actually believe in, that's gonna give us hope and give us a plan for the future. So this is a historic showdown. We need everyone joining this. There can no longer be people standing on the sideline thinking somebody else is gonna do this. Um, we need your help. So please talk about the Earth Bill. I put the link in the website to go get uh, where you can sign up and stay informed and join the organizing. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Tom. And we really should continue this conversation. As I said, there's so many opportunities for collaboration. We have the workshops that will start on Saturdays, March through May. Um, and those um, go from 12 to 4 p.m. So people can sign up on Eventbrite. Maya, you can put that again in the chat. Um, and then it all culminates on um, Saturday, May 11th with the procession to the 21 site. So there's opportunities for if there are singers, performers, dancers um, who have ideas and still want to create, we can partner you, have you connect with one of the sites to develop new work. We have poets who do extensive research on what's happening in the neighborhood and then develop poems. So all of the work that the artists create is really developed through um, a collaborative process and through research. Um, so just reach out to Earth Celebrations through mail at earthcelebrations.com. And then we do something fun to close out the meeting. We do a fun Zoom collage. So we ask everyone to pick out 
a uh, picture of nature on your phone and then you will hold you can hold up the picture to the camera and we're going to do a, a little movement and when we hold it up it's best to hold it up horizontally so we're going to start with a movement arms to the left Around. Super nature. Arms to the left. Super nature. Arms to the right. Around. Super nature. And we'll put up our images. 